Welcome to Revlog today, and Jay Z, Robert. I think you may have to keep your 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 finger on the, uh, the bleep button. I don't know. There's some. There's the, some. The, the, is there a seven second delay? There's a, there's uh, some coarse language in today's text. Um, some crude yes, imagery. I, I don't know how yeah. how far we're going to go. All from the, the Bible. That's right. This was from us. Uh, yeah. The, I don't think this made imagery. this Jesus storybook Bible. I don't think this <laughs> chapter five <laughs> quite. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but when circumcision is the topic at hand, it can get crude, right? And it, and yeah, yeah. There's a couple of places here where well, Paul kind of makes it that way. Very descriptive. He's very agitated. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he is very agitated too. Um, He's nonplussed with with these false teachers yeah. as we come to. So, um, Aaron, we're going to keep this PG. So, um, okay. ha- but help us get, get started here in um, chapter 5, 1 through 15. I'll be PG-13. You be- <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, what did you hear in this text? Well, this has got some of my <laughs> favorite language as well as some of my not favorite language, but for freedom you were set free. Yeah. Um, a little leaven leavens the whole, th- th- I, I just, just so descriptive yeah. that, that mm-hmm. that's, that's great. And then the other descriptive language. Um, the idea that that you've been set free to serve, I, I just I think that yeah. is that that whole idea of being you know prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. I want to yoke myself to mm-hmm. you. That in 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 hymnody, the, the idea mm-hmm. that freedom means we cling to the cross, and yeah. and I so I, I I love that kind of juxtaposition of you know free in Christ means to be a bond servant to Him. And I love that He does take that to the second commandment, mm-hmm. right? The That's right. He, he uses. That that freedom then to love your neighbor as yourself is, mm-hmm. is beautiful and to serve one another. Right? When we yeah, when we went on a mission choir tour in twenty nineteen, we went to Washington D.C. and so I was looking for freedom verses, and this was the verse that I mm-hmm. used that you know that freedom should cause you then to love your neighbor, to serve, and you know what does that mean? And I so I, I've this is a rich, dense thing. Yeah, um, I, I will say that what really did strike out to me was. You know, we've been talking about this cult of circumcision and how it has really informed uh, the people, the church at Galatia, mm-hmm. and Paul's been kind of railing against that for chapter for, for for chapters here. But he's now he also goes and says, you know, it circumcision or uncircumcision, they don't matter to Christ. Mm-hmm. That that is the whole issue of whether you be to let your body or not. And so it's not, you know, he's been saying, don't do it. But but it's it's based on not just the act of circumcision itself, but it's it's where are you putting your trust? Yeah. And so the act or the non-act is is really just so inconsequential. It's faith in Christ. Yeah. That 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 it all boils down to that. So because even your inaction is an action. If right. if you choose not to circumcise, it's almost saying that I'm choosing to rebel against this idea of circumcision, sure. and yeah. that in itself is right. an uh, an action of faith. And he's saying it is faith in Christ mm. and in Christ alone that, right. that, that all boils down to, and then that sets you free yeah. to love and serve. Amen. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Brian, what's what's your well thought the here? the um, circumcision here is of course a, a uh, metonym for the whole of uh, the the law, you know, mm-hmm. the 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 following of the law and the um, devotion <clears throat> to the law as the law, uh, so that you can be saved. Right. You know, and this is this is antithetical completely, of course, to what Paul is preaching here, and so he is. I mean, he he rails against circumcision, but it, to be clear, it's it is circumcision is kind of the gateway to everything mm-hmm. else here. He's he's using that as a right. as something that stands for the whole thing, and so <clears throat> he is uh, so that that really takes center stage, you know. And and he says, why don't they just emasculate themselves, you know? And he gets pretty graphic in his language here. Really, but you, you really? I, I, he said he was going to go PG thirteen. Okay, PG thirteen. So. Okay. PG thirteen. Yes, the uh, Motion Picture Association. <laughs> has, uh, uh, anyway, and um, Paul is demonstrating here how powerful the gravity mm-hmm. of the law is. Any system such as the law, uh, and, and the law was not intended to be just a, a system uh, that people used for. 
the the benefit of gaining favor with God. That was, of course, not the. This is a perversion of the use of the law. But any system that has become a meritocracy or something that uh, will gauge your worthiness mm -hmm. uh, it has such powerful gravity, and it is so hard to break away from that. Yeah. And Paul is using this kind of language, bracing language, really, yeah. because he is, uh, he is attempting to, uh, in the Holy Spirit's power, to wake these people up. Yeah. And to slap them in the face and say, look at what's happening. Right. You are positing that there is a God in heaven who will judge you based on your own effort. And yeah. that is a losing proposition. Right. It is a losing proposition because, it, because there's no limiting factor. That's right. right. You don't know when you've become good enough. And, and it is, it's just... It is. It becomes an all-consuming task right. that destroys the vitality of your spirit and and separates you from God in the end. And he says, "This is grace. It is not works." And the, but the the gravity is such that you're going to be pulled into this yeah. planet, and you're going to crash land, and there's no hope. After that, and I think that is part of the nature of the language here is Paul reiterating this is not a minor thing, right? This, exactly. this is the point. This this is as major as it gets, mm -hmm. and if you go down this road, it is ruinous yep. for you. The church, we Correct. we can't. You, you need to understand. Is, this is what he's positing that that this really is. Matter of life and death. Like mm -hmm. This this yeah. is as significant a teaching as it gets, and you're going the wrong way. Wow. Right. It. It's yeah. not just you know I interpret it this way, you interpret it that right. way. Yeah. This is not an agree to disagree kind right. of thing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well said. That yeah. is that is exactly right. It it determines the future of really how the world understands who God is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Aaron, uh, your question of this text. Well. I have to make a comment to my colleague from sure. New Braunfels. Today is actually National Dictionary Day, and for him to throw out metonym, <laughs> I, I think that is... I know. I went, I went right past it. I, uh, I know. I, I wondered I'm the same so thing. I'm so proud of you. I don't think it's a word. Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow is National Make-Up a Word Day. I think he got You're a day, a day early. <laughs> you don't have to be so blue gardeners <laughs> about this. All right. Okay. Sorry. So... Uh, your question. Yeah, what, what's, question. What's your question of this text? Um, it may not be as salvific as what you're saying, as as um, as it's you know you. So what we're, Paul's talking here about the idea that that there is only one way to think about this this right. idea of our faith in Christ, but in the normal everyday things, um, I think sometimes we um, act against something um, that we don't agree with and. That action itself becomes becomes in itself its own um, pillar, its own uh, stumbling block. We, we're so proud that we don't do it that way. Um, you mm -hmm. know, the the idea of circumcision and uncircumcision. Mm -hmm. You know, we can we can put whatever we think of. You know, we don't do it like those people do it, and so that's where I gain my my uh, credence in in faith is because they're wrong and I'm right. Uh, and I think we. Hmm. Have to be careful here of, of, of what motivates us in our faith. Is it that I'm acting against something, or am I just true to the cross? Is my faith based yeah. again not on on these what I can check off and what I can and do to please God, but rather than where is my heart? Am I completely surrendered to Him? Mm -hmm. I'm struggling here because uh, you know Paul is being very black and white. What I'm saying is, I I think there are things that these little things that we are just putting in the way that yeah. we, we were acting against something and that even that acting against can be uh, a stumbling block. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, there are, there, are, there are plenty of people who define their, their faith as I'm not like those people. Right. right? right. And, and that's how they define themselves as I'm not them. And uh, Jesus even warns us against that, right? Where, you know, you, you see um, somebody praying, you know, thank God I'm not like that, right. that person. Um, and Jesus condemns that. Right. And um, 
in, in that way, for our faith to be rich, it, it's in Christ and who He is. And yeah. that will set us against others, but that's not what it's based on. Yeah. Right? Um, Brian, what's your question of this text? Well, I don't want to be too paragadmonious. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, but... That was very flopalacious of you. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> no. Uh, your question, sir. Oh, yes. Your question. Your question, sir. Uh, <laughs> my, my question is, what am I going to say to the voices who tell me, and I, and I hear these uh, over and over and have throughout my life that say, you, you've got to prove your worth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've got to prove your worth. And based on this, mm-hmm. really, I'm asking myself, <clears throat> what, what is my reply yeah. to these voices? And I think that's, yeah. that's something that we need to wrestle with. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So how often do you hear these voices? I well, you know. more often than uh, I would like, believe they, me. They give him words. <laughs> they do. We would love to hear your comments on Brian's vocabulary. Very <laughs> um, and, and this text if you would comment below. <laughs>